Me, 34 male, with my wife, 32 female, of 5 years. I know she's cheating on me, I can't bring myself to confront her. I, 34 years old, met my wife, 32 years old, at a party 7 years ago. She was the out of your league girl that no one was interested in, and I was the uncomfortable guy in the corner trying not to look. She was eventually introduced to me by the host, we connected over a common love of darts, went on a few hundred platonic trips together, and a year later we landed up in her bed and in a relationship. She proposed to me a year later. In our relationship, she has the most power. I'm a chocolatier, and she's a vice president at a bigger firm. She works long days and even longer nights, while I cook and clean and work five days a week at a little artisanal store downtown. We live in a high-end neighborhood, so I make a solid living, but she earns more than twice as much as I do. So she buys things for the home, such as a new set-top box for the television. The set-top box has a screensaver feature that cycles images from your Apple photo collection. Last week, she was still at work, and when I got home from work, the TV, which I'd used to view a YouTube video that morning and had absolutely switched off, was on screensaver. It had images on it that had to have come from her phone, pictures of her in our living room, one of our female friends, and a man I'd never seen in pretty intimate postures. Because the photographs traveled about the room, I believe there was a fourth person shooting shots with her phone, but I didn't see her. What was odd was that she was wearing a bandage on her hand, which she'd done the day before after complaining of RSI. I was astonished that I had left the TV on, but I decided to keep the screensaver on and see what she had to say when she got home later that evening. When she got home, the visuals seemed to vanish, and they haven't been on the TV since. Because the TV was on, I asked her if she'd been home during the day, and she claimed she'd returned home over lunch to pick up a USB stick she'd left in her computer at home. I attempted to question her about the photos but couldn't bring myself to do it. Now I must add something. I don't have a lot of experience with. I am an introvert who had few connections before to her. Our life, on the other hand, is pretty vanilla, even by my standards. I've never had oral before, and I've only had it twice since we met. Suggesting it to her generally resulted in a lecture about not doing such things, and for the night was out of the question. In those photos, she did everything she never wanted to do with me. I've attempted to approach her many times since that day. She's been staying out longer recently, not just since last week, but for the previous four months or so, and she's often too exhausted for anything romantic, even simply hugging, and when she gets home, she frequently vanishes in her office and comes to bed long after I've fallen asleep. But even when we spend time together, like we did this weekend, I can't bring myself to face her. I'm concerned about what I could hear and how it will affect our relationship. I still adore her and can't picture my life without her. How can I get the confidence to do so? Is there a way to get out of this? So, there's a lot to say. But first, a few words of caution. I had no idea what a red pill was until I wrote this. I now do. I sort of wish I didn't, but a few hundred mails forced me to. You know those debt solution letters you receive when you owe money to the county? Those items came in quick and furious like that. Others concluded that since my throwaway had the word red, I was a sock puppet for them. I'm not. I don't believe they have a solution that isn't worse than the issue it purports to solve. So, what exactly happened? I went for a stroll that evening, she wasn't home, and rang about for attorneys. It was quite late, and I had a lot of voicemails, but only one was answered. She requested me to gather my bank accounts and a slew of other documents and meet with her the following morning. That evening, I resolved to face my wife. That did not occur. She arrived home late and almost immediately went to take a bath. I crept into her office and removed her phone from her handbag. It had a fingerprint scanner, but her pin was the same as the one she used for the garage in our safe, which she had set up, so it was simple. I couldn't locate anything on the phone, and the photos in Apple Photos and Google Photos were all from activities we'd done together, as well as some for her profession. There are no messages or anything like that. Her purse buzzed just as I was about to put the phone back in. She has a second phone. I couldn't log in since it was an Android and had a pattern. But there was a message on the screen, with simply a phone number and no name, with a 3 on it. Replace that. I decided to postpone the confrontation until after the lawyer but I did photograph the message. The following morning, I spoke with the lawyer, who spent about a half hour simply going through probable results and what to anticipate next, followed by another 45 minutes discussing money and so on. We don't have children, and she's the breadwinner, so I'm either out of the relationship or out and do money. It will take months, if not more than a year, to resolve all of this. It seems that it takes five minutes to marry and a year to unmarry. 
I'd gone by my workplace and informed the employer that I was unwell. I look like trash since I haven't slept and have been weeping a lot, so it was fairly convincing. We work in the food industry, therefore being ill is not an option. I returned home, disconnected the Apple TV, and brought it to a buddy who owns a small computer business. He validated what you had informed me, the images on her screen saver are from her Apple photos. He was also the first person I told, and he instantly offered me a place to stay with his wife and children if I needed to leave for a long. Then he contacted the number from which the text on my wife's second phone arrived and informed me that a man named Rob had answered it. I walked home and contacted her to see if she was available for supper. She texted back stating she'd have to do some additional work and that she would be late, so I asked her to make an exception and come home with me since I had crucial news. I imagined she'd believe I'd finally found a home since we'd been searching for a long. Dinner came and went, and she didn't appear. She arrived home at 10 o'clock, smelling strongly of cigarettes. She was overjoyed and asked what I wanted to speak about, so I invited her to have a seat. I'm usually okay with making up a story about a home to avoid a conflict, but for the first time, I felt a little rage. So I informed her. I said I'm aware you've been cheating for some time. I've been working with an attorney, and we'll have to discuss these issues at some point, so now is as awful a time as any. She didn't scream and dispute it. She just deflated and began to shiver. Many of your PMs, as well as my attorney and a friend, advised me not to ask for specifics and to avoid putting pressure on myself. But I was curious, so I said, tell me about Rob. They met via Anne, the friend on the sofa with her, and Anne wanted to have with him while he had a crush on my wife, so they devised this plot. That happened. 14 months ago. They've recently added Rob's wife, the mystery fourth person who shot the photos, who is polyamorous with that Rob man. The image problem was also resolved. She'd given her phone to her wife to snap a few shots and had forgotten about the screen blanker. She'd posted and erased them from her phone while she was at work. I'd seen them by coincidence at that point. She had the second phone for the same reason I did, it wasn't on our joint contract, so I couldn't see the incoming and outgoing calls in my account. She also had brief encounters with other women and a few men, and the majority of her weekend work consisted of her and Rob taking short vacations together. Throughout it all, it seemed like she was giving me as much information as she could in order to hurt me, and it succeeded, but I believe I had a very decent poker face. I informed her that I would be leaving the home, that I had photographed and catalogued everything, and that I hoped for a peaceful parting. She just rejected, saying she'd go and stay at a hotel for the time being, and leaving her keys on the table. She gathered her belongings and departed. That was the last straw. As one user slash you slash Luster put it, it was like going to the dentist, it hurt less than I expected but still hurt a lot. Today, I have roughly 15 missed calls and 150 plus messages from her, all pleading for forgiveness and asking if we might make it work again. I promise to see her the next week, but simply to split our belongings. As far as I'm concerned, this is the end of the story. Except for my one buddy, no one knows yet, and I want to postpone making it public until I go through my belongings and determine what to do next. We'll see whether he truly goes to the gym, if he's looking for a new relationship, and the rest.